All right, guys, so let's have a look at what transuranic elements are. Now, essentially, the elements where Z, which is the proton number or atomic number, is equal to or higher than 93. So on our periodic table, that is pretty much everything beyond this one, okay? So there's uranium, and it's everything beyond uranium. Um, now, all of them are man-made. They're all artificial. There are no natural elements in this list. Um, now, Z of equal to or less than 95, these have a long half-life. So pretty much here we're talking about um, neptunium, americium, and plutonium. Okay, now they have a long half-life, and we make those in a nuclear bombardment, which is done in a nuclear reactor, which we'll see in a second. Um, if Z is higher than or greater than 95, you're talking about a really short half-life. So you're talking about a half-life from somewhere between nanoseconds to seconds. Um, these guys are made, along with other radioisotopes, in particle accelerators, and are basically we just smash heavy neutrons together. And this is a fusion reaction, which is different to a fission reaction. It's a fusion reaction. Um, so let's have a quick look at how the uh, neutron bombardment works. Basically, um, we can do this up to produce 95. And you can see down here that we start with uranium. Okay, so we're going to bombard that with neutrons. And that's why we can't really get much higher than 95. Uh, well, we can't get higher than 95 doing this. So we get uranium-238, which is non-fissile. Non-fissile means that it doesn't undergo fission. It doesn't split spontaneously. So when we hit it, by, hit it with neutrons, it will absorb them, and this creates new elements. Um, we'll have a look at a specific example in a minute. When these atoms are placed, or blocks are placed in the reactor, we get bombarded by neutrons. So here is our fissile core of our nuclear reactor and it is bombarding this block of uranium-238 with neutrons. Um, now, occasionally, they'll absorb one of these atoms, um, but it's unstable and will undergo beta decay, which means it's going to produce a proton, and this increases it. So if it absorbs a neutron, it becomes unstable, undergoes beta decay, one of those neutrons will turn into an electron, and a, or a beta-negative particle, and a proton, and that's how we go up, or well, we go up in Z. Um, and that's the transuranic elements. Now, this is the uh, Lucas Heights reactor. It's the only nuclear reactor in Australia. Um, so it's where this has to be made if you want it made in this country. Um, and that's the core. That's what it looks like. So let's have a quick, look, a quick little example of neptunium-239. So as we said, uranium-238, it's not fissile, which means it cannot undergo nuclear reactions. So we place it in the reactor... What happens is it is bombarded with a neutron, and here we're talking about being bombarded by just one. It goes up to uranium-239, which will then undergo beta decay, so that's, um, that's a beta-negative particle there, or high-speed electron, and which means the Z has increased because we've gone up the number of protons. Um, and this allows us to make the first few uh, transuranic elements. And after that, it's just not an efficient way of doing it. Um, so let's have a look at fusion reactions. These happen in particle accelerators. These are kind of cool. Basically, this is how we make the larger transuranic elements. And we do it by combining heavy nuclei, I'm sorry, colliding heavy nuclei at a high speed. Um, now, we can do this by colliding a uranium, if you wish, as a target one, with helium or carbon or whatever. So... Basically, they have to become at very high speeds. And the reason is, because we're talking about the nuclei, so you've got one ball here that's positive and another one here that's positive, and they need to go at high speeds because otherwise, what will happen if you're doing it at slow speed? They won't have the momentum and they'll start to repel each other. But by doing it at a high speed, we're going to smash them into each other with such a high momentum that that, that repulsive force can't stop them. And that's why we use particle accelerators. Um, so uranium-238, we can fuse that with a carbon nuclei. Um, or, another example, so we're going to look at two examples here, bismuth-209 with iron-58. Um, so, down here we have uh, uranium-238 is getting smashed in with carbon, um, and this will give us 
California, 246. Plus four neutrons. There should be a little plus there. Plus four neutrons. So that what's actually going on there is that is four times one zero particle. Um, the other reaction we've just talked about is bismuth being collided with iron. So bismuth 209 collided with iron 58. Uh, we smash them in super hard and we get over here mitnerium. We'll see that written down in a minute. You have to worry about my mumbling. Plus one neutron. Um, so mitnerium 266 is atomic number 109. Okay, and over here we're at 98. 98 is not so high, but 109 is really heavy. Like that's really big. Um, and we can do this by clashing, smashing in two larger size um, atoms together. That's how they're made. Uh, and this is where they're made. This is the Australian synchrotron synchrotron facility and what you see around here this is in Melbourne you'll see this large coil um, going around there and that's the path that's the beam the path that the the atoms take and they spin around spin around spin around spin around and then bang crash into each other all right I hope that made sense